So a couple of years ago, somebody's phone disappeared. And somebody's what disappeared? Their telephone, their, oh, okay. their smartphone yeah. was gone. And they looked through the whole building and they didn't know where it was. And so the assumption was that somebody took it. Mm -hmm. And we had a, a mandatory meeting and this was a restorative circle. And what we did is we all got together. We, our top floor is a loft area and it would have been the old attic, mm. all this comfy furniture and pillows on the ground. And so imagine, you know, 17, 18 people up there. Cause that's how many people we had at the time. And we did rounds where you could pass, but I don't really think anybody did. And we talked about what the impact felt like mm. for the possibility that somebody's phone was stolen. And so everybody had an opportunity to say how that felt for them, right? So I felt scared or I felt really angry. And these are the reasons why. So we had, you know, somebody saying, I feel really disappointed that somebody at my community would take something that belonged to somebody else. And the person whose phone had been taken said, I just got here. Like I just enrolled. And so this is my welcome. It does not feel, I do not feel welcome. And this is really expensive and my family doesn't have the money to replace it. And I, so I feel really sad and angry and hurt. And then other people were, were saying, well, now I'm scared that my phone is going to disappear. So we went around with all our feelings and we talked about our needs, our need for safety and our need for connection and our need for community and our need for Embark to stay open. Right. Mm -hmm. So if people would you know, go out into the world and say, this is the, what happens at this crazy school because kids are allowed to be there and run it. And so we problem solved what to do. And so there wasn't any finger pointing because, you know, nobody knew. Some people had some ideas, but you never, we never truly knew. And it was, you know, the request of the community. And so they came up with an idea to put a basket in we, our entrance way in the back, our back entrance is a shed. And so mm. they put a basket. We're going to just put this basket out there and then, you know, just maybe it'll show up in the basket. No harm, no foul. It was the plan. And then <laughs> it ended up not in the basket. It ended up in a desk drawer where I hide candy. <laughs> so, mm. so Andrea and I had a secret candy drawer at the time. Um, we have one now, but I'm not telling you where it is. But it was um, our secret candy drawer. And I went in there to get some candy like two days later and it was in there. And so it was returned. Mm -hmm. And, but it was an opportunity for everybody to experience what a restorative circle was. Mm -hmm. It was an opportunity for everybody to share what our community means to each other. And it was done in a way without judgments or evaluations it was just this is how i feel mm. and these are what my needs are here and how do we get to this place together mm. this is the agentic schools vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills what makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.